Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. What makes a university world class? And how can quality in education be measured? There are various ranking systems, each one using different criteria. In an era where economies are knowledge-based, higher education becomes more important than ever and competition between universities becomes even tougher. There are hundreds of prestigious universities around the world. One of them is Yale University in the US, known for its famous graduates as some of the most powerful people in the 20th century went there. Studying at Yale is a dream for many and access is not easy. It looks like Oxford, and with good reason. Yale is one of the oldest universities in the United States and was deliberately modelled on the Gothic style of Oxford's dreaming spires in the UK. It dates back to the early 18th century. So we're in Saybrook College, which is one of the 12 colleges at Yale. This is where I lived my sophomore, junior and senior years. Yes, this is my college. People form these intense bonds and love of their colleges, and if you ask any student at Yale what the best college is, they'll usually say their own. 23-year-old Edwina has completed college and is now enrolled in the law school at Yale. She considers herself lucky. Last year, only 7% of applicants were admitted. There are plenty of resources, small classes, and lots of extracurricular activities. It really is like a community, and the master lives in the college, and they go to the dining hall with their families. And I think it's really nice to have a smaller, smaller community and not just be one of 1,500, but only be one of 100. Yale, like many American universities, has loyal graduates who give so generously because they're devoted to this place. They think the university has made a difference in their life and they want to invest in having other young people have an extraordinary experience. Yale boasts 20 US presidents among its former students, the two George Bushes and Bill Clinton among them, as well as other political figures like John Kerry. Yale has strong ties with power and a more than comfortable budget. The endowment, or the amount of money donated by alumni, is $18 billion. It means the university's doors are theoretically open to everyone, not just the well-off. Any student from any country in the world, if they're admitted to Yale, and if their family makes less than $65,000 US dollars, they come to Yale for free without any contribution by their family. It allows us to amass the best, if you will, brain trust of young people from around the world. There's a spirit of competition encouraged at Yale. As one of the eight prestigious Ivy League universities, it's constantly doing battle with its main adversary, Harvard. The final showdown comes in June with the Harvard-Yale regatta. I chose Yale because um, my father actually grew up around here and he kind of came from nothing, so it was important to him that I went to a good school, so that's why I came here. First contested in 1852, the race is the oldest collegiate competition in the United States. For an insight into the process of university rankings, we are joined now by the director of International Rankings Expert Group, Jan Sadlak in Paris. A recent report confirms Yale as one of the world's top universities. What makes Yale and similar universities a world-class seat of learning? Well, if I can reflect on this description for Yale and other higher education institutions, is uh, that uh, this term uh, is connected with the very fact of globalization, that it's no longer enough to uh, perform at the local or even national level, but it's uh, important to be visible at the global level. How can we make sure that rankings are not biased and politically influenced? With regard to the eventual um, risk of being biased, it is important that uh, those who are producing ranking are very clear with regard to the scope of rankings, what is the ob ob object and what is the, the purpose as well as methodology. Particularly important is the way how the data is being collected and how it is being processed and how it is being published. So those three stages of the production of rankings. 
So what is the importance of rankings and how can it benefit students? Because you mentioned students, I, I think that uh, and the origins of rankings uh, is uh, a kind of the student guide. This thing became even more complicated um, in the context of the massification of education. Number of institutions nowadays is enormous. Therefore, to take such a decision, it is welcomed by the students and the parents to have a synthetic information. This is what is the, the rankings. It's not the, uh, the only source of information. and shouldn't be um, considered as a, as a sole um, inform, uh, source of information to take such an important decision. Thank you, Mr. Sadlak. Thank you very much. Let's take a closer look at the Sorbonne one of the largest and oldest universities in France. While it is elite, Sorbonne says it's open to everyone. Celebrations at the Sorbonne. A qualification from this renowned institution is an achievement indeed. The Sorbonne in Paris is the largest and oldest university in France, with a total of around 23,000 students. Studying here is free, but making the grade is no easy task. The university president says elite institutions must constantly rethink to survive. We have to adapt to a wide public, which doesn't live by the intellectual, cultural model that the traditional European and North American universities are used to. We can say this is the biggest challenge today for universities in the so-called rich world to be able to fit in the new students, new socially and culturally, to a university degree. Robert de Sorbonne founded a college in 1253 for penniless theology students. The only remnants of the original college are parts of the chapel, which is still visible in the Sorbonne courtyard. The lecture theatres and classrooms have been rebuilt several times. But Professor Daniel Andler, who's well up on new technology, thinks the Sorbonne needs a facelift of a different kind. One of the problems is that many students who trust us to give them an education actually drop out after one or two years without a diploma. It's a shame. We'd have to rethink very hard the way we teach, maybe taking as a pretext the new technologies, to allow us to sort of reset the clock, to allow us to teach in a very different way. More than 40% of the Sorbonne's undergraduates come from abroad, perhaps tempted by the prospect of student life in glamorous Paris. The reality is the rigidity of the French system. The system is very different compared to Germany, the way of teaching and learning. Here, there's much more learning by rote and lots of exams from the start. I chose the Sorbonne because it's one of the traditional French universities, the best in France and very prestigious. This is the Latin Quarter, an historic area. We go out to cafes and cinemas. You find everything here. In fact, the Sorbonne dominates the Latin Quarter of Paris, which is perhaps one more reason why it's such an attractive place to study. That's all for now. Hope you have enjoyed the program. You can watch all our episodes on our website. We'll see you again next week. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.